Hi, I'm Clay Lane, Caterpillar's Waste Application Specialist, and today I'm going to talk to you about a pre-shift walk-around on this 973K track type loader. In the landfill, number one, it's one of the har most harshest environments that we can put a piece of equipment in. So our track loader, this one is equipped with our waste handling package. So it's got special guarding around the idlers, around all the cylinders, as well as the, around the final drives and special types of undercarriage and tracks for the waste application. This particular machine, we like to call it the Swiss Army Knife of the landfill because of the versatility of it. I can do everything from push and spread waste to load trucks with dirt, dig uh, dirt out of, uh, out of a hard bank for to generate my cover soil. So I can do a number of different things with this track loader in the uh, landfill. But as we uh, talk today, we're gonna do our pre-shift inspection, which is very important because of this being such a harsh environment. It's very important that I do that pre-shift inspection so I can catch something before uh, when it's a minor issue before it becomes something big. So as I start off, a couple of rules of thumb with our walk around inspections. Number one, it doesn't matter where you start. It's as long as you start at the same place every day, okay? The first thing you want to do when you walk up to that machine, you're already looking over the machine to make sure as you walk up to it, you're looking at the ground, make sure you're not going to trip or fall over anything. You're also looking at the machine as a whole as I walk up to see if anything sticks out from a, uh, from a damage perspective. But I want to walk over, I want to shut the disconnect switch off, pull that disconnect switch out, key out, and that's what I call claiming the machine. So that way I keep that with me. Nobody else can get in there and start that machine up while I'm around doing my walk around. Okay, now. Myself, I'm left-handed, so I always like to start on the left front of a machine. And no matter what the machine is, that's where I start, so that's where I say, doesn't matter where you start, as long as you do it the same way every time. So on this particular machine, I'm gonna step in here, and some of the things that I'm gonna look at from an operator on that pre-shift. I wanna be able to look in and see any of my pins and my pin keepers, and be able to see those bolts and make sure everything is in place and not loose, okay? I also want to look at the machine as I'm coming out as, at my lift arms. Some of the things that I'm looking for are if I have cracked or spider web paint, that's usually a good indication to me that maybe I got into something and I have some type of structural damage with, with that machine. So I'm looking for cracked spider web paint. I'm also looking at my guarding to make sure it's in place. I'm looking at that chrome on the, any of those uh, cylinders, to make sure there's no damage to the chrome. Good rule of thumb, it's always good for an operator to keep a rag with us. So I can wipe off any of that dust or debris that gets built up around that rubber seal on that cylinder. So that way, as that dust builds up, every time that cylinder goes in, it takes a little bit of dust with it, and every, eventually I'll end up with a leak. So good habit to get into, wipe that, that dust seal off on that cylinder. So as I come out, I'm gonna look at my bolts, make sure my keepers are in place. Coming down, I'm looking at my tilt, tilt arms, make sure all bolts are in place. As I look at the back part of this blade, or a bucket, I'm sorry, bucket as they come out. I'm looking for cracked welds. Good indication is I'm either gonna see that weld that's cracked or I'm gonna see some rust on it. That's gonna give me an indication that I got some moisture in there and that that weld is possibly cracked. I wanna look at the side of the bucket for any structural damage, but I also wanna look at the side of my GET up, up front and we'll talk more about that as we get to the front. But that kind of takes care of my bucket. Now, as I come out, I'm gonna start looking at my undercarriage as I come over. I want to look at my tracks. I want to make sure when I can see all the bolts for the uh, shoes and, and the, these uh, grousers and the pads are all in place and tight. I want to look at the front idler. I want to make sure there's no damage to that front idler. I want to keep an eye on my pins inside here, make sure there's no damage to those pins. Also looking underneath at any of my bolts and my guarding underneath. I want to make sure all those bolts are in place and they don't work themselves out. As we said, this is the harshest environment that I can put a machine into and it's possible you know, that those bolts could come loose. I'll come work my way back, look at the carrier rollers. I wanna make sure there's no flat spots on those carrier rollers. If I got a flat spot on there, good in indication that maybe that carrier roller was seized up and that track is still running over the top. So I wanna keep an eye on that. <clears throat> As I get up inside here, this is a good spot where I can look in. This is gonna be my, uh, if my when we raise the cab, my safety, uh, Latch inside there is going to hold the cab up and hold that cylinder up. So I'm going to make sure that pin keeper is in place. So I want to open up, look inside there. I want to look inside here as well and make sure there's no leaks, no damage. This right here is my transmission oil filter. 
So I want to look around, make sure I don't have any leaks coming out of uh, any of those filters. I can open up this compartment. Here's my cab filter. Always want to check that out, make sure that I want to keep uh, inside that cab as with our advanced cabin uh, filtration system. Uh, very good filtering capabilities, uh, same as the N95 mask to keep the operator uh, free uh, of debris inside the cab. So I want to make sure that that cab filter is uh, clean and not dirty. Another thing that we want to stress too, as I'm looking over this undercarriage, you can see I've got a lot of garbage and debris built up inside that undercarriage. It's always important at the end of the day, you know, get the shovel out, get the spade out, pick all that trash out of that undercarriage so we can prolong the life of that undercarriage. So um, we, we do make our, um, our specific waste handler machines. We're always thinking long-term about making it easier for that operator to clean out. So uh, we want to clean that out. Some of the things that we do as well to add to that, a lot of our undercarriage, our tracks, have center holes in them on our waste handlers. And that's designed that, that will push that waste out through the center hole as it goes around that final drive so it doesn't pack in there too tight and makes it easier for, uh, for us to clean that, that uh, trash out of the undercarriage. I'm also gonna look at the back part of this guard here, look at those bolts. I'll get into looking at my final drive back here. I wanna make sure that I don't have anything going on and when I can see, you know, I've got segments on the sprocket. So I wanna make, make sure that all those bolts are tight on that sprocket. And a good indication there would be as well is if I can, as you can see, there's a lot of dirt and mud packed around that, those bolts that I can't really see. But if I got one bolt that I can see and I can't see the rest of them, it's a good indication I got a loose bolt right there because it's not allowing any of that, that debris to build up. So that's what's gonna draw my attention to it if I have a, a loose bolt or anything. And then that, that will conclude my checking out of the undercarriage as I work my way back. Now, we'll step over here inside the compartment here. Here is our CEM, our Caterpillar Emissions Module, or our Tier 4. I just want to look at that. You can see that it's heat wrapped. So that way to kind of contain the heat inside there because as we know, being in the landfill, a lot of that debris, a lot of that trash is going to get inside. We try to keep it from getting inside, but stuff can still get in there. So I don't want to get any of that dust or that debris around that heat source. So putting that heat wrap around there, also being able to wrap the turbo inside there with that heat shield is going to help prevent fires in, in the uh, in the long term. We also have a ducted alternator inside there too that's also going to pull that dust and debris away from the alternator and prolong the life of the alternator. Okay, we'll lift up, shut that. Another thing we kind of take for granted that we really want to pay attention to is all our steps on the machine. We want to make sure that all the bolts are tight so that way that allows the operator good access points to climb up to where I can still put my hand up and still maintain three points of contact as I climb up on that machine to check fluids or mount and dismount it to get up inside the cab. All right, now as we come to the back of the machine, I wanna look, make sure that I don't have anything built up or anything on the uh, radiator guards in the back here. Also, this is a good spot for me to be able to get down underneath and look underneath the machine. Um, I've got all my guarding underneath, so I wanna make sure that I don't see, number one, see any fluids that are coming out, leaking down through the belly pans and, and the guarding underneath. Also, it gives me a good spot to be able to look diagonal over here at this final drive to make sure none of the, I don't have any leaks around the dual cone seals over there. And then I can step over here and look underneath from this angle and look at this side of the undercarriage and make sure I don't have any leaks coming down from my, my final drives on this side. Now, as I work my way around to this side of the machine, a couple things we want to look at for my pre-shift coming around inside here. I've got my dipstick for my oil color coded yellow which tells me it's engine oil and it's also got it marked on the uh, handle right there here's my oil fill tube as long inside here I've got my fuel water separator I've also got fuel filters so this is where I want to look make sure I don't have any leaks coming down around any of those filters also right here is my master disconnect switch I've got my master disconnect I've got a switch here for lights so if it's dark out and I want lights while I'm outside the machine then I also have my uh, hour meter up here. Now at the top of my hour meter is a little rectangle open spot, and that's uh, an amber light, and that's what we call our weight to disconnect light. So when that is illuminated, I cannot shut that disconnect off because that's allowing my, my tier four system to purge the def out of the lines and back into the tank. So as long as that light right here, that little rectangle is illuminated, that says wait to disconnect, do not shut that off so I can allow those lines to purge. 
Now, as I come working my way back to towards the machine, I'm gonna do the same check that I did on the other side, on the undercarriage here, looking at the final drive, looking at the tracks, looking at the pins, looking at my guarding underneath. Now, at the same time, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna open up. I've got my uh, window washer fluid there. My battery is also right inside there. So I just wanna look, make sure there's no debris inside that area. Inside here is my uh, diesel fuel. So this is where I'm gonna fill up my diesel. This right here also is uh, my DEF tank. So the blue cap, I'm gonna pull that off. That's where I'm gonna fill my DEF fluid up. Now, a couple things with the DEF. I wanna make sure before I add DEF, I always wanna take a rag or something and wipe this off and make sure that area is clean. Because our DEF, it's very easily, it's very easily contaminated. So if I pull that cap off and I've got all the dust around it, I'm gonna eventually contaminate that system and then I'm gonna have problems with DEF quality on this machine. So we always wanna keep that clean before we, uh, before we fill up, okay? Working back, as you can see, I got bolts around here. I'm getting back into my lift arms. I'm getting back into my lift cylinders. And I'm also looking at this side of the undercarriage, once again, with my pins and bushings underneath on the track, my guarding up front, getting back into my front idler. Now, as I come over here, I'm gonna use three points of contact, climb up, and right inside here is my hydraulic sight gauge. Okay, so that was our hydraulic sight gauge. Now, while I'm up here, this is a good time for me to be able to check out my cab, my window guarding. I want to make sure the bolts are tight and I don't have any damage to any of the shield or the guarding around my window. Okay, now as we finish that side up, we're going to check out the front part of our bucket. The main thing we're looking at here is we want to look at our GET or our ground and gauging tool. So we want to look at the teeth on here. These are what are going to allow us better, better penetration for getting into the, some of that bank dirt, but also for getting into that waste and, and spreading. But I want to make sure that all my bolts are tight. I also want to make sure the bolts on my cutting edge in between there is tight. And once again, another thing that I can look for to tell me if I got a loose bolt or not, is as you can see, I've got all this mud and, and, and debris built up. But if I've got one bolt that doesn't have anything around it, that's gonna draw my attention to it to say, hey, there's something going on. With that being loose, it's not allowing any of that dirt to build up around it. So that's gonna draw my attention to it as the operator and say, I've got a loose bolt. Okay, so I work my way across. All my GT, GET is good. I also wanna look at the trash rack as I'm coming across too and make sure that all my welds are in place and I don't have any damage to that trash rack as well. As I come over, this would conclude my pre-shift walk around. Now, at the end of the day, when I'm done operating for the day and ready to go home, I'm gonna park my machine and I'm gonna do my post-shift walk around. And it's very important to do that post-shift walk around as well because that's where we find on average about 60% of all fires happen after hours. And a lot of times that can be attributed back to maybe where we didn't clean out any debris around the heat sources of the machine and everybody left and went home and that, that debris was sitting there smoldering on a heat source and then it ignited after we were, we were gone and that's how a lot of the fires happened. So very important to do that post shift walk around too and remove any of that debris from the heat sources as well.